since Christianity is an overarching definition of a major shift that's happened in Christianity in the Latinized world of which we are very much a part and of which this festival is very much in evidence. Back in the 1990s, uh, a lot of church leaders started noticing something that now is incredibly obvious, that the lower you go in age and the higher you go in education, the lower the attendance was in church. And so people started talking a lot about generational shifts. But then a, a number of us started saying, you know, this isn't really just about a generational shift, it's about a cultural shift. About every 500 years, uh, we go through a great upheaval. Um, the last one was the Great Reformation. Uh, which um, changed everything. And scholars are now saying that as surely as we say the Reformation started on October 31st, 1517, we're going to say the Great Emergence is going to be dated from 9-11. I think September 11th and the reality of global climate change and maybe what we're seeing with the Arab Spring r represent these epical shifts all of these to me are signs of the need for a change. And people might say, oh, that's an ecological change. That's political change, economic change. Yeah, but underneath it is a spiritual change. And that's what I think all of us are, are tapping into. Are we going to take the nonviolence prescribed in the Sermon on the Mount and make it our lifestyle? Are we going to take a new attitude towards the poor and make it our attitude towards the poor? Are we going to take a new attitude towards living in terms of brothers and sisters of faith and taking Christian communities seriously. These are the questions. On earth as it is in heaven. And there's Emergence Christianity by definition is always going to be scattered community. Uh, it doesn't want hierarchy. It doesn't want a national headquarters. It doesn't want any of that stuff. It is cohorts meeting together. Because we are emergence, I tend to not use the word authority. I have noticed that a number of emergence break out in a rash when I use that word. Uh, and so I have changed my rhetoric to say, how now shall we live? Or who's making the rules? Or on what do we depend? Any authority I have in my church actually comes from the people who are saying, um, we're, we're going to allow you to hold an office for us, right? So I represent an office, but the only reason I, I represent that office is because people have allowed me to and continue to allow me to. And as soon as they don't, I won't hold it anymore. I won't have the same authority. People are going to create new versions of what Christian community looks like. It doesn't mean the old are going to go away. They're going to lose influence, though, in my view, and they're going to um, open pathways for, for new expressions to take place. Obviously, th it, this has engendered some pushback and some critique, and so certain people say, oh, you are a bunch of heretics, oh, you're a bunch of liberals, and they have all kinds of names that are a way to say, we're nervous about that, keep it at a distance. Critics are right about this emerging movement in the sense that it's not treating Scripture the way Scripture has been treated. The people who say that we're disregarding the Bible haven't realized there's a difference between the Bible and their interpretations of the Bible. We might be disregarding their interpretations. Oh, we're not disregarding them. We know them. We grew up with them. Some people, like me, suggest we need to treat Scripture better than it has been treated, and that's what we are trying to do. Others would say, well, you know, you've, you've actually undermined it or, or found it of less value. We're finding that the Bible is far more expansive and dynamic and vital and robust than the somewhat boxed and uh, packaged versions of the Bible that we inherited. I think Chesterton was right when he said, the way of Jesus has not been tried and failed. It has not been tried. And now is the time to try it and there's a whole emerging group of young people that say, we're willing to give it a try. I think a lot of us thought these ideas are so radical that by the time we die, maybe we can get a small hearing for them. We never would have guessed that within a decade, these issues would be being discussed widely among Christian leaders literally around the world. And I think that's where a lot of credit goes to the emergent church and the emer emergent movement to really push the boundaries of, of what orthodoxy looks like, push the boundaries of what faith and activism and contemplative um, thought and prayer looks like. You have a faith, that's just the first step. Now what do you do with that?